What's up, Dream Team? Uh, I've been gone for too long, but uh, seems like I'm able to get a little bit of more time now, so I'm going to get back to it. <sighs> I've been gone for too long, been pretty busy with work, still pretty busy, except for this week was slowed down a bit and gave me a chance to catch up on a couple things. I'm still moving. I've got a mess everywhere. Uh, anyways, so 100 push-ups today. And I'm still going to make up the other push-ups because I've been missing a couple of days here. Been missing a couple of days and I need to make those up. All right. So I'll do the math when I get a chance and I'll see how many I need and, and we'll get it all squared out, team. All right. I do it for you. I do it for me. I do it for we the people. Let's go. A hundred push-ups, baby. If you can and you're smart about it, you want to stack the next thing that adds on top of the experience you gain for those three or five years, right? Where it gets tougher is where you have to net start somewhere new because it's it's kind of like losing that time. Now you learn some character traits, some interpersonal skills, things like that, but the domain specific or industry specific knowledge kind of dies there, which is kind of tough. So I like to just try and be directionally correct, which is like, is there an industry in general that I find not shitty? So like, don't try and find your passion because you're not good at anything yet. So like, why would you be passionate about it? <laughs> we're, we're usually passionate about stuff we're good at. And you suck at most things that you haven't done much of. So trying to find passion for something that you haven't done a lot of is kind of silly in my opinion. And so um, one of my rules of entrepreneurship, if not the first rule of entrepreneurship, is use what you got. And so I'm going to weave that into the uh, motivation, which is question three. So, you know, when I was, when I was your age, it sounds weird. It um, <laughs> wasn't that long ago. Um, <laughs> Yeah, 13, 14 years ago. Um, I was not like, I want to make a business that changes the world. And right now, you're probably in academia and you're at a young part of your life and it's exciting because you have unlimited opportunities, which is cool. But for me, I was not super passionate about really anything. Um, I wanted to not be broke. I was very passionate about that. I would say that was my, that was my guiding mission. Um, but what I did have a ton of uh, was anger. I had a lot of anger. Um, a lot of shame, a lot of, and a lot of, a lot of pride, uh, my ego, and that's what I used um, to get me out of, you know, not being motivated. And so I think that the academic world, and I know it's a culture's tough right now. Um, and you guys probably feel pulled in different directions, um, but I think a lot of these words that people throw around, like trauma and stuff like that, does not serve you. So I will save some contrary views right now. So what? No one cares. And so, like, even if your uncle raped you your whole life, that's tough. And no one cares. No one's going to care. And so the thing is, is, like, if you blame your lack of success or your lack of motivation on some external circumstance because your dad didn't give you enough high fives or your mom didn't hug you enough oh. as a kid, you give them the power. It means that you were giving your... <laughs> ability to be motivated into you're putting it in someone else's hands and for me i was 19 when i realized that how old are you guys in the room 20, yeah between like 19 and 22 okay so i was like i was y'all's age um and i realized that the people that i hated the most which to me at the time were my parents um i was giving them all the power for why i was not going to do the things that i ultimately wanted to do like i won't be successful because she didn't love me enough and he never gave me approval and blah 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 but at one point i was just like no one cares and so then i had all this anger that was kind of left over because i didn't have it pointed at them so i pointed at me and then fearing the failure or the judgment of having my dad call me a failure was for me the biggest motivating factor i had because like i didn't have the passion that many people talk about. I did have the rage, and so that's what I used. And so I'm not saying that you might have that. You might have a different emotion or a different feeling or a different fuel, but use what you've got. And I think that'll get your head above water, and that'll get you moving, and then you'll start getting some wins, and then you'll start getting a little bit more directionally correct, and you'll start learning as you go. Because the difficulty that everybody has right now in this room is that you lack the perspective from which to make a judgment. So the easiest analogy I can think of here is like, if you are not into fitness at all, and you're trying to lose weight, and you read one article that says bacon is bad for you, another article says bacon is good for you, and somebody else says you should have high carb, another person says you should do carnivore diet, another person says you should be a vegan, and all these people look like they're in shape, and you can't tell the difference, it's because you don't have perspective. 
So all of these people, you, and so you feel lost. And so the only thing that you can really do at that point is you just have to move in one of the directions. And you will start gaining knowledge, and then you will start pivoting, you'll start moving in the direction that, that starts to serve you more. And you kind of got to fill your way to success. You iterate. So it's the, it's the fallacy of the perfect pit, is that you think that like, I'm gonna get, you're gonna get the perfect diet on your first shot ever. Really unrealistic, unless you walk out and talk to like an absolute expert on the first shot, which is truly not. <laughs> but most, most people don't do that. They just read some articles and it makes some sense and they're like, okay, well all of these kind of are calorie restrictive. Okay, well then that's generally the direction. So you start moving that way, right? And so, um, I wanted to just hit on those points from a, from a motivation perspective and from a what to do when picking that, the right choice. So, so far, we have three of seven covered. Thumbs? Okay. So, in a show of thumbs, should I go, uh, let's talk about the debt thing or let's talk about what to sell? Debt or what to sell? I think they want both, but let's start with <laughs> Okay. All right, fine, we'll do that. So, um, the, the risk that I took was a, an enormous risk, um, and it was probably not a wise risk. That being said, the context around me betting 100 grand when I had $1,000 in my bank account was that I was a six-time gym owner that had done 30-plus turnarounds. This was not my first rodeo. I knew that if I spent 100 grand, I had a very high likelihood that I was going to make it back. The risk, the real bet, was that I didn't have a processor. And I just was betting that I could get one set up by the, by the time I would need to pay the credit card off. So the bet wasn't so much that I was going to bet 100 grand and not, not make the money, because I knew the system. Like I've been doing it for five years at that point. And so that, just to give you guys context. And so for, for you guys, if you're like, oh, I want to get like, you should not go into debt for your first business, in my opinion. Because you don't, you have, I'm going to cuss. You have no fucking clue what you're doing. <laughs> right? The biggest risk that you have is ignorance. You have no clue what you're doing. And that's okay. That's the whole game, right? The whole game is that you continue to learn. Um, but from the debt perspective, you already have ignorance debt, and you should, you're should you going to be paying that off. You don't want to pay financial debt and ignorance debt at the same time, because those compound. Okay. Do you guys all want to start businesses? Or is this just, like, just a college program? Yeah, so many of you want to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. Okay. It's a okay. This semester. Okay, that's good. I mean, not good. I mean, good or bad. I, I was more just curious because I, I remember I, I so I was in an entrepreneur class when I was in college, and this guy who owned a Sherry, which is a massive uh, cell phone insurance business, like came in and talked, and I was like, man, this guy's smart. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and uh, I just, I think a lot of people after I was walking out of the class, like, didn't have any interest in becoming entrepreneurs, at least the vast majority of my class did not become entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurs has like a really like cool sound right now. It's kind of in. Um, I think when I started it wasn't cool. Um, and so like at the end of the day like you're just selling shit. Like that's all you're doing. You're just you're just getting a stranger, you're just solving someone's problem and selling stuff and getting them to give you money for it. And so I remember in my little entrepreneurial class, everyone was very product driven. So it was very much like, I'm going to make a widget that doesn't, we're going to create waterproof headphones, which by the way, didn't exist back then. But that was like, that was like high tech. Um, and, so, and, so, and so everyone kind of did their whole pitch of like the team thing, right? And uh, my team started, a, we did a, a, a toilet seat that you could lift with your foot, like a trash can, you know, those little trash things, like, so that way the seat would lift up, right? And we like, look at the margin, we saw it for, it's like, you know, our version of the squatty potty. But the thing is, is like I remember doing that and then never actually thinking I would ever do this business. And what most of you guys don't know is that like it is so easy to crush other people who are in business. And so that may seem like very different from what I just said about like you don't know what you're doing. Uh, let me bridge the gap. Most people don't try to help. Like think about the people in this class. You guys know there are some people here who don't try for shit. Right? Now imagine that person has a business. Like, it's easy to beat them. It's like it's really not hard. Like you just you just show up. Like and you already beat half the field, right? Like answer your phone on time. Like respond to emails when customers ask you questions. Like actually tell people about the thing that you have, right? Like try and do a good job. Ask them to leave a review. Like not rocket science. But guess what? All of those things are like homework, and people don't do it. So a lot of like 
crushing it in business is really just doing the basics that other people want to. Like a lot of the school lessons that you have right now apply. The same people who don't do don't work hard also don't work hard. Like it's it's the same, right? Um, and so, uh, in terms of picking what to sell, this is my roundabout point here: is that you could start a dry cleaning business tomorrow and make money doing it. You could start a lawn care business tomorrow and make money doing it. You could start you could start a house cleaning business. You could start commercial cleaning. You could start like there's a zillion different businesses that already exist, and all you have to do is do it better. Like that's it. Like you can you become a multi decker millionaire just doing it better. That's it. So for, for some of you guys who are like, I want to get a business and I don't know what to sell, my advice is, number one is you have experience or some exposure to business in some way. And usually that's in the form of like what your parents do. Like you've been exposed to industries like just over the kitchen, All right. in the background, like my parents are I That's 100. Do it for you. Do it for me. I will never use it. Do it for we. The people dream team. Let's go.